Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel. So really quick, I'm going to be referencing a bit of the past and the future for the sake of context, uh, but I'm sitting down right now to record this chapter on the weekend following Christmas, which is the holiday that I celebrate. Uh, but I hope you all had a very happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, depending on what you guys celebrate. Um, hopefully you guys spent time with friends and family. I did the same. Um, I actually streamed a little bit during the holidays and a lot of people were tweeting at me a bunch of different things that they got. So happy for all of you who picked up Persona, also picked up a Nintendo Switch for the holidays. Uh, so that was pretty great. And also this is going to be uploaded to my channel the weekend following New Year. So this should be the first reaction video that is posted to my channel for the year of 2019. Now I'm super excited for 2019 in general because 2018 was great. Um, I, I definitely, looking back and looking like inward at myself there's definitely a lot of things I could have done a lot better um, in terms of a con you know being a content creator but I'm incredibly proud of all of the videos and all of the goals and aspirations and strides that I made uh, in 2018 super excited for 2019 for, for for Ruby obviously for Genlock for returning to RVB for getting into more gaming content and everything else like that so I, I definitely just want to say thank you guys all so much for continuing obviously to be a part of the channel a part of my you know growing experience as a youtuber and i hope you guys enjoy the videos we obviously have the rest of ruby volume 6 to get through which is what we're going to be getting into now today uh with volume 6 chapter 9 titled lost um based on the last chapter uh, we got obviously a little bit of backstory on the silver eyes from Maria to Ruby. Um, Team Ruby and company went to uh, the Argus li uh, military base where Caroline Cordovan is stationed and is not letting anybody through by any means. And Oscar ran away based on the outburst and kind of lashing out that Jean did once they found out the truth about Ospin. So at this point, that was the lasting effect uh, of the chapter. They're like, Oscar's missing. And obviously everyone has to go and find him and make sure that he's okay. He's the youngest member of the bunch. Um, Ospin is nowhere around and he's in a big city that he has no idea about and you know by the time they go out to look for him It's probably gonna be nighttime and whatnot. So hopefully, um, you know, this is a big meaty episode as well I think it's like 18 minutes or something like that uh, but I think this is a great starting point to kind of Finish up whatever Argus is going to have in store for us because I think we have five chapters left. Carrie also mentioned that uh, the Volume 6 finale is going to take place on January 26th, uh, 2019 for first members, which is the same day that Genlock premieres. Uh, on the Rooster Teeth website for first members. And I've seen the first episode of Genlock. Rooster Teeth did a stealth stream of that uh, during the holiday break. And please watch Genlock. That's all I'm going to say. I have videos. I have my reaction already recorded. I'm going to be kind of pushing for Genlock as we get closer to it. But I loved the first episode of Genlock. It has so much potential. The scale of the show is incredible. So if you have not seen Genlock yet, there are some people who have seen it. If they were at the stream, there are some people, there are a lot of people who haven't seen it. Please check out Genlock. But without further ado, um, thank you guys so much for the support in 2018. Thank you for continuing to support me at the beginning of 2019. And without further ado, we're going to be jumping into Ruby Volume 6, Chapter 9. Let's begin. So this is really interesting, but uh, Volume 6, Chapter 9 Lost actually has Emerald and Mercury in the thumbnail, which is pretty exciting considering we haven't seen the villains for a very very long time we don't know what salem's up to we don't know what emerald and mercury are going through now that they know that cinder is alive uh you know watts and hazel you know especially since hazel got the brunt of the punishment essentially from salem um back in chapter four but it's been a while since we've seen them so i'm actually excited that we're getting a little bit more of the villain's pr perspective because again volume five mainly focused i think on hazel and adam in terms of the antagonists and volume four really had a lot of Tyrion uh present which i thought watts would be like the star of this volume but i guess he'll be more he'll serve more of a role once we get to atlas but i just thought that was really cool because i didn't know that up until now but anyways we're going to be starting ruby volume six chapter nine lost with cinder gone emerald and mercury are starting to raise questions and they're not the only ones jean nora and ren search for oscar but still aren't sure what they'll do if they find him well first and foremost definitely have to apologize to him because jean completely lashed out uh, at, at Oscar and even deemed him like, oh, he knew about everything and didn't say anything, despite the fact that he's thrown into the situation just as much, if not worse than anybody else in the bunch. Um, and, you know, essentially he was guilty by association because of Ospin. But I'm excited for the chapter. We have 18 minutes, 35 seconds, chapter 9. Uh, obviously, we're going to be getting a perspective of both the heroes and the villains, which is great. But again, thank you guys so much for the continued support. Thank you for returning for another Ruby video. Uh, as always, leave your thoughts in the comment section. And without further ado, we're going to be starting this in 3, 2, 1, now. This 
was how the war begins. All right. Please watch Genlock, everybody. I've seen the first episode. It is so good. The scale, the potential, the animation. Uh, I like the characters right off the gate, too. And not everyone got to see this at the live premiere um, that was sneak preview during the, the holiday break. But I think Genlock is going to be something special. I am so excited for this show, man. Voice acting is also pretty good, too. Oh, boy. We're back. Holiday break is over. We're back to some more Ruby goodness. We have the last five, four to five episodes to get through. And I just can't wait to see how it all comes together. But here we go. The first singing of 2019 as well. Stay close. Move fast. The darkness cannot last. No hope, no path, but we've got a dream to catch, and we cannot wait. Mm -mm -mm. Trust the way we're made, the sparrow's going to fly, the mountain's tower. The river knows to reach the sea. Rain would help the flowers be. We're the same, you and me. The lightning doesn't take advice from anyone. The willow doesn't need to learn to stand. A sun seeks day. We'll find our way and we'll catch that dream together someday soon. We're rising like the moon. Let's go! Ruby Volume 6, Chapter 9. No idea what to expect. Very excited. Alright, my volume's up. Alright, let's see. What do we got? <laughs> oh? Oh, Emerald! I hate and being Mark. kept in the dark like this. Yeah, Yo, sparring match? It was a pain, but at least she kept us filled in. Oh! Oh! Yo, getting them punches in there. Can I see I you, my boy. You You're gonna. Oh! <laughs> Why did you come with us? The night Cinder and I found you. I noticed that he punches more and Yang kicks more. Just oh, yeah! What the hell? Why did you join Cinder? That's right. Uh, uh, we don't know his motives. This made sense. Yeah. It made sense. All the my hell? life, my father trained me to be a killer. An oh yeah, the, ma the assassin. Yep. And then moments after I killed him, you guys yeah. show up for my first you gig. <laughs> showed up looking for someone with my exact skills. Yeah. But Yo, just them felt kicks. Like it was meant to be. Is Mark gonna yeah. fight this volume? Yo. That's it. He's so ready. Hey, what's your problem? I mean, there has to be something you want from this, right? Salem's promised us everything. We Come on, bro. For her. We'll be top dogs in her new Hell world. no, dude. What more do you want? You guys are pawns, just like the last batch. I just... Cinder was the only family I ever had. She She's... cared about me. <laughs> taught me things. But without her here... Emerald's far more emotionally invested than Wake Merc. Already. She doesn't care. Cinder doesn't care about you. Exactly. She doesn't, doesn't care about either of us. Thank you. You don't know what you're talking about. Come on. You're They're in denial. Polar opposites right here. If you're going to start having a crisis of identity or some crap, <laughs> get me out of it. Yikes. <laughs> you're really going to what? what? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't have a mommy that loved you. Oh. I had a father who hated me. Yo, they're literally you opposites! Never went easy on me. Every day of training was a beating. And when I unlocked my semblance, <gasps> I stole it with his. What? This is a what? This makes you weak. He has a semblance that steals semblances? I was strong. So I got strong. <laughs> but I never got it back. Oh my I've god! I've harder than anyone to get where I am. You may not like it here without Cinder, but, but I he does. Right where I'm supposed to be. Holy fuck, dude! <laughs> A semblance that steals semblances? Yeah, Terry Steel! Oh yes, the world. Holy is me. shit! And I'm a big <laughs> bad man now, just like the others. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been standing there? All you ever learned was pain and violence, long enough. and now you're too afraid to leave it. Such a tragedy. Oh, come on, Tyrion. You don't know me. 
I wouldn't do that. I would not do that. I would not recommend doing that. <laughs> hey! Shh, 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 shh. I want to tell you both a little secret. Your question is all wrong. <sighs> that what? tail looks sick. What do you want from this? I wonder if his tail transforms. Children, please. If you're not loving what you're doing, then you're in the wrong field. <laughs> That's so the what? one time I'll agree with Tyrion leave? on something. Absolutely oh, agree no, with no, that. No, no, no. Do what you love. You can't do that. <laughs> then what did you come here for? Yeah, what did he... To say farewell. There's been a change in plans. What? Her grace must act swiftly if we are to prevail. Oh, is he going? If General Ironwood to comes Atlas? to his senses and calls upon aid from Vacuo, all may be lost for us. Okay. That makes so sense. So the good doctor and I are being sent to Atlas. Holy shit, he's prepare. going back for round two. <laughs> prepare for what? Tyrion. Round two! Come on now. Oh my god, it's he's gonna. Time. I wonder if he's gonna rematch Crow. Oh my goodness. Do New tale. Makes you happy, children. Please, I'm begging you. Huh? Well, there's the poison. I think they're gonna go their separate ways. Emerald's like, Emerald's too emotionally invested in Oscar! Cinder. Like Cinder, like you are literally a pawn to Cinder. Cinder's so cocky and Oscar! arrogant and only cares about the herself. He's enormous. He could have gone anywhere. Oh my god. Okay, so oh we're back fault. here. Oh my god, that I've first reacted. half was really great. We actually know I their motives don't now. I really understand what happened. Was it about the mission? Dude, the city is so beautiful it's at night. Kind of hard to talk about. I know, I know. Top secret. Did he do something wrong? No, no that was all Jean. He didn't. Lashed we just out, got man. Some new information, and it's going to be a lot harder than we thought. I mean, if it was easy, then it wouldn't be important, right? <sighs> I think we're all just a bit unsure of what to do next. Yeah. You could stay in this <clears throat> role. Get your licenses at Haven no, lady, they, they're on a mission to, to save the world. There's a lot of things you can that. do here. Does that say $2 cafe? I know your mission is important, but it's not like you're the only ones who can do it. It's not the only mission that needs doing. Come on, Saf. You don't know it's the bit. No. Not that <laughs> yeah, it's a bigger than life kind of mission. Well, I know you're trying to help, though. I should go pick up Adrian from daycare. Ooh. I'll let Tara know what's happened and... Oh yeah, I was gonna later. say too, like, where does a kid go when Good these luck. two are, like, busy or out and about, you know? Damn, where's Oscar, man? Hey, there's a cafe over there. Why don't we get something to warm up? I'm okay. You two go on ahead. Yeah. You need to find the... We gotta find the, the compost king. We gotta find out where he's at. You don't want anything? He wants to be left alone. We'll be right back. What does that say? New memorial now open, city of Argus. Oh my god, are they really doing this? The leaf, Pyrrha. <gasps> oh, no. Oh my god, please don't. Please don't do this to me. Rooster Teeth, please, I'm begging you. Please, please don't do this. Oh. Like a dream. You've got to be kidding me. You at me. Oh, my God. <laughs> and everything. Oh, my God. We know volume three happened. Some people fall in love. Oh, my God. They gave vocals to the OST. No, no, it's really beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my God, yo, please don't tell me it's that like her yeah. sister. Uh, well, Why the you? hell? She Why the hell does she look like Red? Phantom Academy. Everyone was crushed when she chose Beacon over Haven. No one wanted to see her go, but it was where <laughs> she wanted to be. I'm just That's glad Jen she was Brown's voice. By such amazing people.
She should be standing here. She is. <laughs> She understood that she had a responsibility to try. I don't think she would regret her choice because a huntress would understand that there really wasn't a choice to make. Exactly. And a huntress is what she always wanted to be. Kira never got the chance to graduate, but she was a huntress. Thank you. I think that's Don? her mom. Oh no, the whole gang. John, why did you... I'm sorry. I've been a terrible leader. And a terrible friend, and I have gone. This has to stop. We heard what you said to Cinder at Haven. You're not being fair to yourself. We love you just like we loved Pira. We're teammates. Family. We don't want to lose you too. I think, I think she knew she wasn't going to win. Yeah. That she might not come out alive. But That's why she kissed you. She also knew she was the only one that could try. So she did. <sighs> Maybe we should too. Yeah, we should. Pyra may not be by our side anymore, but we can fight like she is. <laughs> and in a way, she will be. Yep. We should check back in at the house. Come on. Oh my god. Oh my Thank god. You. The leaf. I'm, I'm done. I'm done, dude. I can't even process this episode. Come on, let's get him off. <sighs> Fucking crow! <sighs> Why am I on the <sighs> stairs? Because you're a Probably drunkard. because no one's home, Uncle Crow. We've been out looking for Oscar. Oscar? Oh, <laughs> Adrian! I'm sure this looks great to the neighbors. <laughs> No luck? No. You? Mm. Don't worry. We aren't going to Atlas without him. <sighs> Good. We? Yep, all of us. Sorry we won't be staying. Sorry no, I punched a hole in your wall. <laughs> How about we get out of the cold? Are you oh, kidding I me? Was wondering when you'd get back. Oh my god, Oscar! Ah! He's got an outfit! <laughs> Yo! Look at his he outfit! Sick. Are you okay? What are you wearing? Yeah! Uh, Holy shit, you look so cool! Oh, oh Marie uh, with the baby! Yeah, I thought maybe you guys would appreciate a hot meal after <laughs> spending all day looking for me, apparently. Yeah. It's my fault we were all out there in the first place. Oscar, I am so sorry for earlier. <laughs> I was way, way out of line, and what I said- No, it's okay. <clears throat> Stress. He gets it. These past few days, I've been scared of the same things you were. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be- You. Me. Shit. But I did some thinking, and I do know that I want to do everything I can to help with whatever time I have left. Good shit. Good. Good stuff. This team isn't the same without you, Oscar. <sighs> Farm boy's okay! <laughs> The casserole! Oh no, We're it's burning! It, <laughs> By the way, who punched this hole uh, in my wall? Here looks good. 
Hell yeah. Oh my god, he looks awesome. Yeah, Ruby, can you go talk to your uncle, Where please? Where are you going now? I don't want to get in the way of your celebration. You've been gone all day. Just sit with us. <sighs> Look, Ruby, I'm glad you kids worked out, uh, whatever all that was. <laughs> but the fact is, we're not a single step closer <sighs> to Atlas. Actually, I think I have an idea. Oh, shit. Use Maria's but eyes. <laughs> it's sort of a no going back kind of idea. Oh, God. Uh -huh. Are they going to attack the base? They're going to attack the base. With Cordo on watch, only Atlas airships have the clearance to leave for Solitas. Steal one? So, we steal an <laughs> Atlas airship. <laughs> <laughs> that's not just breaking the baby the thought it was that's, funny, too. That's definitely worse. How yeah. can we even get onto the airfield? That part I haven't quite figured out yet. Yeah. But I was okay, stop. Just <clears throat> stop. What's up, Crow? Look, if this thing goes south, it's not something we can just fight our way out of. This is the Atlas military we're talking about. They're already on For edge. Your sake, just <clears throat> drop this. Poor guy. He's down in the dumps too. Ruby, you're that spark. Come on. You can't give up. I want to hear him out. Ruby. I want to hear him out. Okay. I know you're trying to protect us, that you're afraid <clears throat> we can't do it, but right now, I don't really care what you think. <laughs> okay. Yikes. Just because you don't have an idea doesn't mean we're out of options. Oz hasn't been here to tell us what to do, but we still managed to get this far anyway. We've been in bad situations before, and we didn't need an adult to come save us or tell us what to do. Good team leader. We did it our way. Come on, Crow. And I say we do it our way. Ospin, you're happy to come. You're welcome to come back whenever you want. And if you think you can keep up with us kids, oh, <laughs> we'd be happy to have you, old man. <laughs> Maria's Looks with like them. You didn't give her enough credit either. Hey, I'm proud of you, Ruby. I'm proud of you, girl. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy. I cannot believe they did that. And they brought back the music from volume four, chapter two. <sighs> and they gave it lyrics. Like a dream. <laughs> I cannot believe I can't wait to listen to this song. She's gone, but she still gets a song. <sighs> oh my god. <sighs> Let me pause this. Let me pause this. Pause, okay? I can barely see. <sighs> Fucking, I need a minute. I need a minute before I can like compose myself to like have a have a post discussion talk about the episode. Hey guys, so I actually wasn't able to come back and kind of compile my thoughts immediately after watching that episode for the first time. Uh, it's been a few days since that episode has come out, and I was just emotionally torn after watching the Pyrrha scene and kind of dealing with those emotions throughout the entire episode and then hearing the song again and all of my emotions coming back. So I, I kind of let myself emotionally rest and emotionally heal after, after that moment. It was so tragic. It was so beautiful and heartbreaking and heart-wrenching to kind of go through all of the, the feelings and emotions that we had since losing Pyrrha. Since like the show started of getting introduced to her during volumes one and two, getting to know who, getting to know her, see the dynamic between her, Jean, her team, her dying in volume three, seeing the remembrance of her, you know, her in the, the, in the, in the, in the poser engine, uh, you know, on the scroll in volume four, chapter two, and you know, everybody else is in the modern Maya engine. And, you know, Jean exacting revenge to Cinder on, you know, her killing Pyrrha in, in the last volume. And now 
it all coming together with Jean seemingly moving forward now, kind of putting to rest all of the animosity and negativity that he's had swelling up inside of him for the last few volumes since her death. And also, I think it was really great that we got to see Ren and Nora kind of voice their opinions on the topic because, you know, we have that big time skip between volume three and four, and we obviously know that they were all grieving in their own way. And it seemed like they were showing more of Jean and how he was dealing with it the hardest out of everybody. But it was really great that we had, I think, what will probably be the last true Team Juniper moment out of everybody uh, for this episode. But like I said, um, I I just, it, it hit me so emotionally. And it was something that I wasn't expecting. And I really wish that they hadn't done it for the sake that, I mean, I'm glad that they did do it. Because again, I think it's something that the fans really appreciate too. Because a lot of people over the years have been saying, oh, we want to see, you know, Pira's family. We want Jean and, you know, Team Juniper to go to her family and explain the situation. Obviously, everybody already knew that she passed. They built a memorial uh, and, you know, had a statue of her in honor of the people who fell fighting uh, to defend the fall of Beacon. And, um... You know, we got a little bit of backstory from her. We got to see the red-haired woman, which we don't have an official name, but I think that was her mom. There's also some theories going around that that may have been an apparition, a spirit of Pira, or some type of ghost, or some type of spirit based on how the spirit, like, kind of left. But the flowers were there, so it seemed like it was a real person. I think it was Pira's mother, had the same red, uh, the same green eyes, red hair, looked just like her. Also, I made a comparison, mentioned that she looked like Red from Transistor, which is one of my favorite games of all time. I wouldn't be surprised if they used uh, a little bit of inspiration for her to model it after uh, the red-haired woman or modeled it for the red-haired woman but the Paris scene destroyed me and I loved it and and they even used the, the OST from previous volumes like as far as volume one and two and created Forever Fall the song that was playing which I think is like a final swan song send off for for Pira which is crazy too because Forever Falls is my favorite location in Ruby but um I loved that scene. It it hurt so much. I it hurt me so much to have to go through that. And I loved that that was the case because it was like, you know, we saw Jean's pain and we 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 just heard, you know, from the mom. I'm gonna call her the mom from the mom's perspective of like that was pure like that's truly who Pira was. She lived, she died the same way that she lived, like trying to help people and always doing what she wanted to do, even though it's a little bit iffy and sketchy based on Ospin's design of creating the schools and putting that image in her head. So the Pira scene was absolutely amazing. I loved the intro scene as well, um, kind of getting the little scuffle between Emerald and Mercury because they do have this somewhat brother, like sibling rivalry, right? They're not obviously, they're not obviously siblings, but they've been together for a really long time. Mercury has defended and stood up to people like Tyrion uh, in, in Emerald's defense a few times, and he's always been by her side. And it's very clear to tell that Emerald has more of an emotional attachment to Cinder based on the fact that she took her off the street. She's kind of, in a way, saved her life. And it's crazy, too, that you think about, like, Emerald, Mercury even said, like, you're, you're in denial. And it seems like she's very delusional and unable to see how self-centered, how conniving, how um, arrogant and egotistical uh, Cinder is. And she has this sort of delusion, which is ironic, considering how she has a semblance of illusions and it seems like she's more delusional than anyone else when it comes to seeing that emerald i'm sorry seeing that cinder doesn't really care for her or anybody else besides her motives her goals and wanting all of this power and we also learn a lot about mercury i have so much respect for him now first and foremost had a semblance his father had a semblance that steals semblances which is crazy to think about because it's like I didn't think a semblance would ever get that complex, and I don't know about the intricacies of how that's possible, um, but it's super crazy to think about because now it's like Mercury actually fights for what's his, and Mercury puts in 120, 200% more effort into fighting and surviving than the average person because he doesn't have that trump card that everybody else has when it comes to defending themselves and having an advantage in battle. And I loved his whole his whole thing kind of like expressing like he decided to join because it, it just felt like the right thing to do. His whole life he wanted to, you know, he was built up to be a killer and he just comes into the right scenario. I personally think that Emerald and Mercury just need someone to love them and tell them everything's going to be okay to kind of get out of this 
this routine life of of killing and 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 being a source of like negativity and and being on the wrong side basically and it doesn't seem like at least emerald is bad she's just running with the wrong crowd and maybe even mercury too but it seems like mercury revels in it a little bit more than her uh seeing Tyrion's always a joy he's got a new tail him and uh watts are moving on to atlas which is really great i can't wait to see what what happens in the next few episodes regarding all of that and um kind of jumping a little bit more forward obviously uh i already talked about the pira thing oscar's new outfit looks so cool man he looks so great uh he's kind of he's really coming into his own obviously he's respect you know he's taking up more of responsibility taking up the mantle of things um you know the whole situation of everyone being on the same page is great team ruby and team juniper they're gonna see this through to the end now uh, and I was really happy to see that the whole conversation that Jean had with that woman or the exchange that he had was what he needed to move forward and have his team move forward and understand, look, we're in the situation where we feel like it's no point of even trying, but look at Pira. She was in a situation where she probably thought and she probably knew she wasn't going to come out of that alive, but she had to try. And that's the resolve that they went into with now deciding to see, you know, this grand world mission through to the end, whether or not Ospin is going to be with them or not. So I really appreciated and enjoyed that resolve from them. Again, like I said, seeing um, seeing uh, Ren and Nora's response to everything, they're voicing their opinions on Pira and how they felt about everything and how they feel about Jean and whatnot. Uh, the plan seems a little out of whack, like stealing an airship to get to Atlas. I, I, I think Atlas is already, already has an itchy trigger finger and is already on edge based on everyone kind of throwing, you know, pointing fingers at them at, you know, being a result of the fall of Beacon. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, but overall, I thought the episode was great. Ruby's speech initially I liked, but upon listening to it again, I was like... You know, she mentions like, oh, we didn't need an adult to, to, to help us or tell us what to do. But she fails to realize that Crow killed all of those Grimm and were in, you know, were keeping the Grimm at bay while they were traveling to to Mistral, you know, when he was like behind the scenes and not really showing that he was there. Uh, he's the reason why Ruby didn't get killed by Tyrion, you know, during the fight between Tyrion and the squad before Crow showed up. And she's kind of the reason why Crow almost died because she didn't listen to him and stay out of the fight. And just a few episodes back, if it wasn't for Maria, all of them would have been killed by the apathy. She gave Ruby a quick tutorial on the Silver Eyes, and it's because of Maria that they're all alive. So, Ruby's speech, I know what they were going for, but it felt very like, what the hell are you talking about, Ruby? Like, you definitely have needed adult guidance this entire time. I know they're trying to make her, you know, give her development and make her more of the leading protagonist of the show, and she's a team leader. And I understand they're showing all that, but when you step back and rewatch that scene, it's like... Ruby, what the hell are you talking about? But anyways, um, like I said, this is just a little insert that I wanted to put in after the fact because I didn't want the reaction to just end abruptly. Like I said, super emotional for me at the time, so I kind of wanted to give myself a little distance to uh, recuperate before I gave my afterthoughts on the episode. But like I said, I thought it was a great chapter. Um, chapter 9 was awesome. We have a few more chapters to look forward to of this volume. So with all of that said, I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, thank you very much for the support. Leave your thoughts in the comments as always, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.